people, I would like to thank organization of New York Marathon, members of, of FES, people who are cheering us outside there. I say thank you for them because they help us a lot. For me, in the race, the race was, was not easy. Although I won, it was not easy because it was tough. But I thank my colleagues because we help each other and then we perform well. So that's why we perform very well. In, but I was not expecting to win at that time. Uh, for Jeffrey, it was a, a, again a very um, uh, productive and lucrative day. $130,000 for the win, plus uh, $70,000 as a, uh, a time bonus. In fact, all three gentlemen um, have uh, time bonuses of $70,000. So it was quite a, quite a lucrative day. E Emmanuel um, uh, Mutai, uh, second place here. Um, on top of that, he claims the uh, World Marathon Majors crown for this year, for the uh, 2010 and 2011 season, um, another $500,000 uh, for claiming that. Emmanuel, your thoughts about running against Jeffrey and your thoughts about the race today? Yeah, for me, the race was a bit uh, tough today, but I knew it would be a bit of challenging. As, uh, as in other times when you are in the press. So for me, I'm happy about the results. And on top of that, maybe the weather today was so favorable for us, that is why the good results we produced by my friend setting new post records. And even for me, I ran 206 uh, under the time of today. So as I compare today and last year, it was a bit uh, uh, a lot of difference. But for that, I'm happy about yeah, about the uh, uh, World Media Marathon points. I was second after the Patrick Macau. So for me, it was so hard for me. But uh, I was supposed to be in the top three so that I can secure that uh, amount. So. For that, I'm happy about it because uh, I tried my best to to say it, but uh, I'm happy to run. Because I'm coming second, I was still in the lead. So I'm happy about it. Okay, his thoughts about the race today? No, it's too long to tell you. It's too long to tell you. The name, yeah, at this now, because we're beginning to look at it. Uduru dah kata mana, uduru kata mana bionya, kata uduru na, terus ni kan kita nak cemas. The race was more or less very good for me. It's a new race for me. I've never run here before, and the course had a lot of uphills and downhills, which is also good for me. So I believe it went well. We'll open up uh, for questions, if you could just write John Powers uh, from the Boston Globe. John? Yes, this is a uh, question is for uh, Joffrey. Uh, after you won Boston, people said it isn't a world record. It's uh, uh, an unrecognized course. You had a big win. How do you feel now beating this field of top people, and taking down the record by so much? Do you feel that this uh, proves that you are worthy of being considered the world, the, the world record holder. Thank you for that question. For me, I'm happy enough to now because even although it was not recognized, I'm happy to be that level. And I know one day or maybe another coming years, maybe I, I can come to, to do something. But even the course here, it was not, it was tough, but the weather, it was so good. So I think I'll, 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 make, I'll try to maintain myself to prove it, to prove it. Uh, Liz uh, Robbins from the Times. For Jeffrey and Emmanuel, can you talk about not having pace setters? Uh, as obviously there are the faster courses in London and Berlin. And does that make this accomplishment 
perhaps even greater in your mind? For me, or what I can see, or maybe all of you can, can see, the difference about the races which people have been broken world record. You see, all those races are pacemaker. And here we don't have pacemaker. I don't think if those people can come here or can run here, if they can break the world record here. So for me, that is challenging for, for everyone. Or the other way, I think maybe they can see something about those races without pacemaker is different. For me, in terms of pacing, I see sometimes uh, it is more challenging because uh, sometimes you might find that some athletes stay behind all the way. Maybe the last few kilometers, maybe between 12, but the race like New York, you have to be more have concentration and use your own skills to see how far if you have to go, at what point will you have to do. So for me, because I used to, to be in front always, so I don't care about uh, if the race is having pacemakers or not, because I'm used to the train, even the training, we used to stay each other there. So the training also matters how you train with the group and if you don't have a group, what will you do? And you have, you have to choose the train. So that made me so feel when I am in the race, so I don't see, uh, I don't feel uh, more uh, more nervous when there is no pacemakers or there. I always say, let me do according to the, the strength I am. I, mean, I felt like I yeah, Pat, this is for Jeffrey. Can you, how do you compare the New York course to the Boston course in terms of difficulty? I think, I think, uh, yeah, it's more a little tough because in Boston there are some more hills, but it's not so many, not so much like in New York. And I think it was different in that time it was different competition that time and today. So yeah when I, I compare New York and Boston I see it is more different. But in Boston I, I traveled to see the course but today I was not I don't know the course so I was going only without knowing what is coming ahead of me. Right down here uh, Joe uh, the tiger of New York University of Sports Joe question for Jeffrey and Emmanuel. Do you both feel like you've done enough here today to impress the selectors of your Olympic committee to make that team? What I can say, I'm happy if they select me to be an Olympic. I'll, I'll do the job which will, will get me there and I'll try my best in Olympic. Yeah, for me, I see it is more challenging because uh, the federation they have mentioned the names of Patrick Macau and other group so they need only one so I don't know what uh, criteria they use because today in New York they have done a good time last week time there was a Geoffrey uh, no, Pusan ran two or three so I don't know what will they you so, but for me, if I will be included in the team, I will be happy about it. But uh, for that, I cannot say I am eagerly waiting uh, for the Olympics. So maybe they might say, yes, we have mentioned the names, but we have the, you have to participate in the uh, marathon in Madrid. So maybe they might say, so you have to produce another result. So I don't know what they. Say, but for me, I'm ready for anything. Uh, back here with uh, John. Or either Jeffrey or for Emmanuel. Uh, has the Kenyan Federation said, because there are so many fast runners, that they might have you run a spring marathon? Uh, would you run possibly uh, London or Boston before the Olympics? 
or is this your last marathon before that? For me, I don't know how, the, how the, they say about the selection, but if they will select me, I will be there. Because, you know, when you have been selected, you must do it for your country. So I don't know which people, or, or maybe me, I will be there if they will select me. What I can say, I don't know what criteria they will use, but what they will use, all the studies we, we must do because you have been selected, so you don't have any other choice. Yeah. For me, if they would say they will have, you will have to participate in the spring, so I will have to follow the rules because maybe that time they will have to see what you produce at that time and compare the, the past. So maybe that will be the, the, the challenging again because they might say when you participate and then they see if you are capable of producing a good result, they say you are going to the team. But if you do not produce at that time, so they say no. So you have to prepare for energy. Right here with that, Ambie, and then we'll go to Rachel and we'll go to this side. Thank you. A question for both Jeffrey and uh, Emmanuel. Uh, Jeffrey, were you a little concerned that the pace was slow in the first half and many runners around you? And did you have a plan about where you would make your attack and, and go for it? And Emmanuel, why was it hard to stay with him when he made his attack? Well, for me, I was not saying that I will stay up to about somewhere and then I will hop in the gut. But I was controlling myself and how I was feeling. So, but later I discovered that if we continue like this, maybe we can go up to the end, like to, to go to the finishing line. But maybe all my, for me, I used to, to run like that in, and at the end of the race, but I was not expecting to, I was not waiting until that time. Did you want Emmanuel? So, yes, I wanted to ask him why he couldn't match Jeffrey when he made no, the move. for me, you know, sometimes it is very difficult to, to follow some, somebody, but uh, you know, you have to use your own skill to, to see how strength you have. So, for me, I was not uh, saying if Jeffrey move, I would have to follow, but I used, let me try my best at least to secure the position in that top three. We'll go to uh, Rachel right here for the Associated Press, and then we'll go on this side. Jeffrey, do you think you ran a better race today or a better race in Boston? And if you do get the run at the London Olympics, how confident are you now you could win that gold medal? Today, and even last time in Boston, all those races are no best men. So I'm happy with, those, with this competition and with the team in Boston. So, if, and if they select me because one champion Olympic would not have pacemaker, I think maybe.